conceal identity by camouflage, pantomime, and mimicry. In the strange world of insects who disguise themselves, there is nothing so final or fatal as giving a bad performance. so mysteriously alien as insects. Their behavior and appearance can horrify or tantalize the human imagination. Although the dictionary classifies them as arthropods, complete understanding of the world of insects appears beyond the reach of our vicarious human sensitivities. Yet, they occur almost everywhere and make up more than half of all the living things on this planet. There is no reasonably based scientific estimate of their numbers. Even the most modest projections boggle the mind. To date, approximately one million species of insects are named but it is generally believed that there may be several times that number, perhaps as many as 10 million more still to be identified. In the late 1980s, Terry Lee Irwin of the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of Natural History sampled insect populations in the treetop canopy of the tropical forest in the Amazon basin. Using a biodegradable insecticide which only kills arthropods, and has a two-hour life. The yield of insects was incredible. Based on his work in this forest, Irwin estimated that there may be 30 to 50 million species of insects on the earth, most not yet described. If it were not for the many checks on their increase, enemies, adverse environmental conditions and the like, we would soon be overrun by them. In an extreme example, a pair of vinegar flies, in which the female can lay a hundred eggs, may have 25 generations a year, and could, if there were no checks, increase their population in a year to about 10 to the power of 41. This number of flies, packed a thousand to the cubic inch, would form a ball over 100 times the diameter of the sun. Central Malaysia, over 2,400 square miles of the jungle, 100 million years in the making, has been preserved as a national park. It has been allowed to remain in its natural, primitive state. The jungle atmosphere is warm and incredibly moist, creating a scenario literally teeming with life. The humidity is always over 95%. 10 minutes of walking here would leave an average person soaking wet with perspiration. The jungle is a cornucopia of plant life. There are 3,000 kinds of trees here, all of which attract insects. To appreciate what life for insects may be like in this environment, one has only to consider the fact that in tropical forests like this, which occupy only 7% of the Earth's surface, 40% of the world's insects live. That statistic is made more coherent when it is compared to another which postulates that there may be more kinds of insects on an acre in North America than species of birds in the entire United States. And their numbers may be as high as several million per acre. Is it any wonder then that here, in these incredibly lush surroundings, 
Many insects have devised the most ingenious methods of disguise, camouflage, pantomime and mimicry, to survive being eaten by myriad predators and in turn to deceive those upon whom they themselves would prey. Perhaps nowhere else in the animal world do creatures adopt their disguises with such flair and ingenuity as here. Consider the bizarre deception of this insect. What better way to avoid being eaten than with this disguise? Somehow, by evolutionary wit and wisdom, this creature has transformed itself to appear particularly unappetizing to its chief predator, birds. What bird would feed on its own droppings? The deception of the Raja Brooks birdwing butterfly is multifaceted and confusing to insects and birds alike. This is not a flock of birds. It is a flock of butterflies. The bird wing butterfly is more than seven inches wide. It is not only imitating the flight dynamics of birds, it can fly faster. For mysterious reasons which no one has been able to fathom, the males of this species come here at noon to drink the water. There is an almost unlimited variety of insect life here, much of it which remains a mystery. The ghost walker lives in the shelf fungus. Why it has adopted the shape of a violin is a question which has intrigued and puzzled scientists since its discovery. Perhaps it is a disguise for a predator which no longer exists. No one knows. The Global Family will return on the Discovery Channel. Mustang, symbol of the American West, tonight on Mac and Monthly. What do dogs respond to? the taste of meat. Imes knows meat protein makes dogs look and feel healthy. It's so important for eyes, muscle tone, skin and coat, and energy. That's why there's more chicken-based protein in Imes than the leading dry dog food. So feed your dog the taste he loves. Imes. And he'll thank you in so many ways. Because quality protein matters. Insist on Imes. Mr. Fidel, we're going to talk about the painting. Okay. Now, first the living room. I want it to be a soft green. Uh-huh. Not as blue-green as a robin's egg. No. But not as yellow-green as daffodil buds. No. It should just be a sort of grayish-yellow-green. Uh-huh. Even the most demanding job has a simple answer at your Benjamin Moore dealer. Call 1-800-826-2623 for the dealer nearest you. Benjamin Moore, a stroke of brilliance. For those who want to escape a gridlocked world, BMW has created the new all-season 325i convertible. It opens a whole new world, 365 days a year. same old place. No kidding. I'm thinking of early retirement. I'm not thinking about it. I'm doing it. Two more years. You can swing? Yeah, my Payne Weber guy helped me out with it. Remember the stock money we got after the 84 buyout? He took it and restructured my entire portfolio. How did he know he wanted out back then? He asked. Discovery Channel invites you to go behind the scenes of a real criminal investigation, piece together the clues to catch a serial killer, and discover the high-tech crime-fighting equipment of the future. Strap on a badge, step into the line of fire, and go in pursuit of justice. Beginning Sunday at 9 Eastern and Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. We now return to the Global Family on the Discovery Channel. 
A leaf shining in the sun? No, this is an insect. The details of its disguise are more than startling. They represent an awesome achievement. Parts of its body are shaped to look like they've been eaten by another insect. The green on its underside is dark, soft like a leaf. One would almost think that nature is allowing us to see something here which is forbidden, not meant for human eyes. The evidence of intelligent adaptation and evolution of insects is so manifest in this creature that it leaves one almost speechless. The strategy of the insect is so perfect, even humans can be deceived. At one tropical farm, the farmer, believing these insects to be leaves, left them alone. They left his trees bare. The insect has so completely adapted to its purpose that it has become an almost exact replica of the food upon which it feeds. Even a keen-sighted bird would be fooled by its disguise. In this Eden-like setting, there is a shower every day. But the sun will shine again in an hour, creating the moisture and heat which provide near-perfect conditions for the laying of eggs and the emergence of new life. In the competition for food and survival, the insects who disguise themselves in this unimaginably populated setting respond to the challenges which have gone on for more than a hundred million years. Many choose to adopt the appearance of the food upon which they feed. Others blend in and camouflage themselves to the habitat they favor. This cicada has evolved to look like a thorn upon a branch of the acacia. For protection, this rather gruesome character can retreat into its own shell the size of a golf ball. be crushed by hand. In this tangle of branches, there is an insect more than seven inches in size. The stick insect hangs its body to the tree and moves when the wind blows, blending perfectly into its surroundings. An excellent example of mimicry. ordinary dead leaf? Look carefully in the middle. There. This katydid has shaped its body like the bent parts of a leaf to keep itself from being discovered. It has even determined the places and the positions to stop. Who would deny intelligence here? 
Does this grasshopper understand that his legs will give his position away to a predator? It seems he does, for he is hiding them under his wings. Here is another kind of grasshopper, which has gone to a little more trouble to conceal its hiding place. It has camouflaged itself to look like the bark of this tree upon which it lives. From its head to the tip of its wings, adding just the right amount of green colors to simulate moss. But unless you were to look at this tree trunk from the side, you would never know he was there. Disguise, camouflage, mimicry, pantomime. In the exotic lushness of this environment, it can become difficult to separate one method of deception from another. This is a species of mantis. The creature exhibits its highly developed instincts for mimicry. These are its forelegs, folded carefully. The middle leg and the hind leg are thinner. Now the mantis looks like bent branches, thin, tangled branches. Moving gently in the soft breeze, mimicry becomes a pantomime of nature. One could be forgiven for mistaking this mantis for a moth. It is a master of disguise. Viewed closer from the side, you can see it more clearly. You can tell it is there because it is sticking out, but it's hard to define the shape. This mantis can move very quickly and is always on its guard. The root of its wing is transparent. Only the lines are visible, yet the bark underneath can be seen. Now you see it. Discovery Channel. Animal celebrities tonight on those incredible animals. Hi, a kid in high school wrote to me from detention. I only have a snap of iced tea to pass the time. Signed, suddenly caught talking. Poor guy. Hey, excuse me, is Jeff here? Thanks for your letter, Jeff. Here's some iced tea to pass the time. But remember, nothing takes the place of a good education. Have some snapples, man. We didn't know we could write this well. Maybe we'll use some of that writing energy in his English classes. KitchenAid ranges mirror nature in surprising ways. With even warmth. Strength that endures. A mystery that unfolds. The fire of creation. All someplace a little closer to home. KitchenAid freestanding ranges built in ovens and cooktops. Because we took a cooking lesson from Mother Nature. KitchenAid, for the way it's made. In the 19th century, one man held nature up to the microscope of his mind. And his vision ignited a fury. Since then, Christianity and the courts have challenged Darwin's theory. But the origin of species remains one of the most influential works of all time. Don't miss a captivating examination of the author and his work. Beyond Genesis, the origin of species on great books. Thursday at 10 on Cable's new learning channel. Do you want to... This is a broadcast TV signal. Stations send these out every day, free to anybody with an antenna, including cable companies like ours. Congress now says we need the station's consent to send their signal on to our customers. And some stations say they won't give consent unless we pay them for it. We're not buying it. Why should cable customers end up paying for something that everyone else gets free? 
broadcast has always been free, and we hate to see things change. I can keep a secret. Really, I can. But I just can't keep a great bargain to myself. I've been saving up to 40% on fashions and jewelry, ah. housewares, wow. and electronics. Where? Yeah. Wild horses couldn't drag it out of me. Okay, TV's Home Shopping Club. Uh oh Sure. And with Home Shopping Club's 30-day guarantee, it's risk-free. Let's Let shop up. Home Shopping Club. Great bargains, guaranteed. We now return to the Global Family on the Discovery Channel. Dead leaves can be moved by the wind. But this leaf appears to be moving by itself. It is another mantis. Its chest moves like a leaf, making it hard to tell that it is in fact an insect. The part of its body which stands out looks like the center of the leaf. Notice the detail of the veins, the colors, and the spots. Now, the mantis is adopting its threatening posture. Its spots are red. Spreading both its front limbs, there are yellow spots. It seems more angry here. In making itself appear bigger to threaten and frighten would-be predators, this creature has begun to assume the aspect of a bird with feathers, a turkey. It is a good and probably frightening performance. The most dangerous disguise of all is, as one might expect, the most exotically beautiful. There are those who say that this insect is more beautiful than the flower which it has so painstakingly imitated that one is hard-pressed to see where the orchid ends and the insect begins. This is an orchid mantis. The larva of this mantis is said to molt seven to nine times, becoming exactly like the orchid each time. Its disguise is so convincing that it manages to escape its predators and at the same time deceive those insects upon which it will feed. The mantis itself. Only the designs on the legs and wings are like the petals of a flower. There is something majestic in this creature, in its appearance and its way of survival, in an environment where seeing and not being seen takes on an importance which human beings cannot begin to imagine. Like a beautiful siren, it waits in disguise for its food to approach. But this creature can afford to wait, for it can catch its food without moving. The dead leaf mantis, a meat eater, is not so fortunate. It must move about looking for food. It must affect its own disguise and mimicry to fool its prey. In this case, the mantis has found his prey and is merely waiting for the right time to strike. Its masterful performance has fooled an unfortunate cricket. The performance continues while the mantis feeds, moving its body in mimicry to conceal its presence from others. The instant in which it begins to search for food again is the most dangerous moment for the mantis. All has gone well, it seems, except for the nagging feeling that it is being watched. A lizard has been observing the scene for several minutes. Realizing its presence, the mantis plays a waiting game and stops, fading into its surroundings. The lizard has time to wait. For the mantis, this will be its final performance.
to spread its wings. This time, the disguised insect becomes the food of the lizard, which has no disguise, nor the need for any. There is no way of numbering the feats of mimicry, camouflage, and pantomime, which give meaning and purpose to the drama of nature unfolding in this tropical forest. As strange and alien as the insect world may appear to human beings, in the insects who disguise themselves, we are given the outlines of a picture too large to be seen, a drama too complex to ever be completely understood, and a story a hundred million years too long to be told. It is not for us to judge the apparent harshness and violence of their existence. Everywhere we look in nature, the truth about the interdependence and symbiotic relationship of all living creatures, all living things, is openly displayed without camouflage or disguise, without mimicry or pantomime. In primitive life among humans, survival itself depends upon respect for the legacy of knowledge and wisdom which abides among the elders of the tribe. Next to the plant life which sustains all living things, Insects are the oldest. It is not too late to give them our respect and to learn from them, if not for ourselves, then for the future of the global family. Sunday at 9 Eastern and Pacific. Now, Mr. Fidelford, we'll talk about the painting. Okay. I have some samples. Oh, here we are. Now, the kitchen's to be white. Not a cold, antiseptic, hospital white. No. A little warmer, but still, not to suggest any other color. The following program is...